Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Airsoft Al, and I got a question for you. Who remembers Cowboy Bebop? Actually, in asking, actually, in asking that, a lot of you will immediately reply with, I remember Cowboy Bebop. I remember the animation, the fucking amazing dub, the voice acting was great, the music, Jesus Christ, the music! I don't know anyone who hasn't listened to, who hasn't watched Cowboy Bebop and immediately owned the soundtrack to the whole series. And for its 24 episodes and one movie, which by the way, I fucking own the special edition to, Cowboy Bebop was amazing, still is amazing. And the studio still cracking out amazing anime such as Samurai Shampoo and many others is fucking amazing. That and the biggest cutaway, the biggest walk away for everyone besides the music was the fucking gunplay and the firearms. One of the biggest one that was mostly requested was Spike Spiegel's fucking handgun. Everyone and their mother won one, even myself. I even have the fucking, I'm, yes. Every gun nut wanted this handgun and they got the real still, but for the airsofters, we begged for it, we wanted it, and while yes, we knew there was a gas blowback circulating in the Japanese market, the fucker was rare to find and expensive Hello Kitty, and I was surprised. At a young age, I found out, I heard that there was a CO2 variant coming, and I was excited, I was ecstatic, and when I heard it was being produced by KWC, I was immediately excited. But, much like everyone, when we found out what was actually coming, much like after watching the movie and realizing that there was no more Cowboy Bebop coming, or even a spin-off series, we were met with nothing but disappointment. Welcome to Gun 3 of 12 Guns from Hell. Get this emotional train going, guys. I've got the reach and the teeth of a killing machine With a need to bleed you when the light goes green Best believe I'm in the zone to be From a yin to a yang to a yang to see Put a grin on my chin when you come to me Cause I'll win, I'm a one of a kind And I'll bring death to the place you're about to be Another river of blood running under my feet Forging a fire that long ago Stand next to me, you'll never stand alone now what can I say about the handgun? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good starter gun, and for anyone who's never watched Cowboy Bebop or even known anything, to them the Baby Deagle is basically a good start to it. And while I'm not going to talk about the handgun itself or the history behind it, I'm going to talk about the feelings it's actually bringing out. And looking at the handgun, I'm not seeing a piece of awesome, of awesome technology that IWI created, or even IMI created, or even Magnum Research created. I'm just getting illicit feelings of nostalgia. Because again, this was one of my favorite icons, handguns. Spike Spiegel, who would be a badass, floating in space firing this handgun, fucking chasing down bounties, stopping biological attacks from a crazy fuck who basically did this shit. It, it, the fucking, that's the nostalgic memories I'm getting from looking at this handgun and remembering the good times when I watched Cowboy Bebop on Toonami late at night when it first came out, and it was amazing. Even seeing the fucking commercial on the VHS of my Gundam Wing. Yes, my VHS of Gundam Wing, the first couple episodes. And that's the memories I'm getting from this handgun. Sad to say, I'm just getting nothing but disappointment. Because I would love a CO2 blowback version of this, and then it would be complete. And the $60 MSRP that this is asking for, I just cannot justify you. I cannot justify saying, get this. Even as a cosplay piece, I cannot justify in saying, get this. But even with all the disappointment, even with all my memories, even with all the nostalgia clouding my judgment and bias towards the gun, is it really that good? Well, I think the real question is, is it really that bad? Is it really that good? What's going on? Because when anyone talks about this gun, the biggest problem they have is the magazine. And the gun itself is 100% polymer. Even the trigger is polymer. Even this, which looks like aluminum, in reality is painted polymer. 
only pol the only parts that are not polymer is the inner barrel and the mechanical parts inside. Every single bit of this gun is 100% polymer on the outside to the trigger. The only big piece of metal is the magazine itself, which is one large hunk of metal. Even with the CO2 capsule in this thing, this thing is heavy as a motherfucker and is the only thing that actually gives weight to this all polymer handgun. And while, yes, it does hold 15 rounds, I have to admit that I was a bit ex uh, surprised to see the V2 on there. This is a version 2 magazine from the original version 1, which the version 1 had a heavy tendency of leaking like a motherfucker. Not only that, but with a non-blowback, you have to fire the first couple shots in order to actually get those CQB FPSs, because when the first two shots hit, you're getting 400 FPS ranges. And really... I can't really say anything else. It's a $60 non-blowback handgun that is nothing more than Spike Spiegel's handgun. And that's the only thing I'm seeing out of this, is Spike Spiegel's handgun. And nothing else. I just cannot say anything else about it besides it's the Cowboy Bebop handgun. And I'm getting nothing but disappointment out of it. I'm getting nothing but nostalgia out of it. I'm just disappointed. God damn it, KWC. God damn it, Cybergun. You fucking knew. You fucking knew that when you released this, that we'd be blinded by our nostalgic feelings for one of the most iconic anime handguns of all goddamn time, that we'd go out there, we'd spend $60 on this thing, which you can buy on sale now on Evi for $40, by the way. But I wouldn't recommend you buy it. I mean, there are better... I, as much as I want to be biased towards this handgun, my nostalgic memories and nostalgia feeling is blocking that bias sentiment because all I see is a blatant cash grab for an iconic handgun that they fucking knew we would buy out of that nostalgic feeling. You motherfuckers! I'm going to try and keep going at this with as much bias as I can. How's the gun perform is the question. Well, it does have a fully ambidextrous safety, which I am happy for. It's evenly done. Now, Grant, I have very small hands, and this handgun is actually rather large in my hands, which means if I was to actually do this, I'd have to actually use my left hand to actually agitate the safety, or uh, actuate the safety. And the design itself actually has gotten credits to actually make other handguns with this style of slide, with the style of a low profile slide. I.e. the CZ pistol, the uh, fucking Steyr pistol that came out recently. Many low profile slide pistols actually work very well and are great for when you actually want to. Also, fair warning, you're seeing me pull the trigger, even though the safety's on, preventing the inner hammer to actually strike, you will still get BBs loaded into this, so please do not play with the trigger with the BBs in there. Speaking of the trigger pull, the trigger pull is actually somewhat long. Then again, that's how it is. Also, if you look there, and of course the not so long reset, because I am happy you don't have to put a full reset, but it's still somewhat long of a reset. So you have to keep doing this instead of, you know, actually having a short trigger. That and to actually fire this pretty quickly, you have to actually use your middle finger. That and you can possibly upgrade this. I have yet to say, I have heard people actually say they have upgraded these to be a little bit better, but I've rarely to see them. That and you can HPA tap this if it's a CO2 mag, or supposedly I've been told. It's just. Now, I will admit the grip is actually really comfortable, like, no joke. This has got to be the most comfortable grip I have ever held. Then it has that iconic 70s style grip to it, where it's just really good. And I'm very happy how comfortable it is. But, let's go ahead, get to the chronograph, and get to the range, as well as distance test, and then we'll get to the final verdict, okay? Okay. For those who don't know how to put the CO2 in the mag, well, no worries. Here's how you do it. You check, you can do it, like, one of two ways. If you're on the field and you actually still have BBs in there and it's out, you can basically take your Allen key, quickly screw out the thing, mag inside of course, because why not? 
Yeah, it's recommended that you don't do this, though. But I'm a professional. Now that that's gone, put that in. Pop in the CO2. Screw that back on. And then, bada bing, bada bing, you know how it goes. Now, if you want to do it the correct way, eject the magazine. Grab your Allen wrench. Just get in there real nice. And listen very closely for the distinctive psh. There we go. And no leaks, okay. And yes, I have to put it up like this because you can distinctly hear a leak if it's leaking, but thankfully enough, not so far. It's not leaked yet. So let's go ahead and get this loaded up. So let's get to the chronograph, okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we have the magazine loaded up with .2s. This actually can only hold 15 rounds, which is uh, kind of standard with most non-blowbacks, but we'll see how it is. Still liking the fully ambidextrous safety, although that is made out of, plant, made out of polymer, so we'll see how that goes. So we're going to fire five shots, see what the FPS is. 433 on the first shot. 13 FPS. Another 13 FPS. Might be an error, more or less. 16. 16. 8. Hold on, let me reset it because I might have to reset it. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, now. There we go. 321. 318. 320. 317. Okay, so the first burst of gas you're going to get, yeah, you're going to be getting some pretty high FPS on the first burst. But once the gas actually starts to dissipate, you're going to get more or less CQB FPS, which is a... Uh, once again, another standard thing when it comes to these, uh, when it comes to non-blowbacks, because the majority of the gas is going uh, into the barrel itself and not the action of the slide, because of course it is. God damn it, hell. So yeah, if you think, when you chronograph it the first time at your field and you're thinking, holy shit, that's hot, no, it's just the first bit of co2 coming out of the mag and that's just how it is also it might uh cause 142 feet so we might actually test to see if it will get 142 feet because this does have the vax system in it so we'll see what uh how we get on distance wise so yeah let's actually take it outside and see what we get grouping wise and uh on the test so yeah let's go okay so here we are at 60 feet back with the baby deagle now I'm going to be taking pot shots at my barn to see if it'll hit the broad side of the barn. Now if I can, now I'm going to be taking one shot each. I'm either going to get further back or I'm going to get close it up. So we're going to see. So here we are, 60 feet. Let's uh, see if we can hit the barn. Yeah! 60 feet, we can hit that son of a bitch. Let's, uh, let's go further back, shall we? Here we are, 70 feet back. Let's see if we can still hit the barn. It's a definitive yes. And don't worry, my animals were not in the way. Let's go back. Let's actually go back 20 feet to 90 feet and see if we can still hit the broad side of the barn, shall we? Okay. Here we are, 90 feet. Will it still hit? Now, there are some obstacles in the way I know. I am going to be moving over a bit so that way I can actually still hit. I am going to... I'm actually going to move you guys with me so you can actually see. Here we go. Move you guys over a bit. There we go. Okay. So, see if we can still hit the broad side of the barn at 90 feet. Safety off. Range is hot. One over. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't know if it's hitting or what. 90 feet. It's where we're at. It's where we're not hitting. That's. So. Around 80 or so feet. That's that's the max distance I could get off this thing. Holy shit, that's actually pretty good. Damn. Huh. Anyway, 
Let's go over to our target, which is an undead liberal, and I'm going to be engaging in a pistol range of about 50 or so feet. And we're going to see what the groupings are at that range, because that is roughly the range I'd be engaging at. It would be roughly 50 or 40 feet, give or take. So let's go over there, shall we? Look at this guy. Look at him. He is so liberal we can barely make out his face. But you know what? We're going to give him a taste of freedom and what real freedom tastes like. I'm going to go for some accurate shots, then I'm just going to unload the mag in him. Okay? Okay. Let's give him some taste of freedom! Freedom, motherfucker! Oops. Uh. Take the grouping as you will. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is basically a nostalgic cash grab. And that's all it is, is a nostalgic cash grab in my eyes. Is it a good starter pistol? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Does it have great performance? Eh, grouping? Not really. It's more or less meant to be that pistol you immediately grab out and you just start doing that. Or it can be used as a cosplay piece. But let's face it, a gas blowback version of this would have been better. And let's face it, for $60, an all polymer gas blowback would have been actually really good for that price tag. Hell, if they made an actual gas blowback version of this that's CO2 today, I bet you anything people would flock to it and would actually buy it up like hotcakes. But, but, at the end of the day, what does this get? With my nostalgic memories and my nostalgia for Cowboy Bebop to the side, and me saying sorry many times to Spike Spiegel's voice actor himself, as well as the creators of Cowboy Bebop, for the fact that the handgun that Spike uses is nothing more than a gas blow is a non-blowback sixty dollar hunk of plastic with a metal mag in it. It gets no more, no less than a five out of ten. It is a painfully average gun. Jesus Christ, people, you had the ability to make something good, and instead you said, "Fuck your shit. Fuck you. Give me money. I'm gonna rape your wallet." And you're going to spend 60 fucking dollars on this to basically buy your nostalgic childhood memories. To buy the handgun that was used by your favorite character. Because fuck you give me money. Of course. And even then. I just. I leave it to you whether or not you're actually going to buy this gun. And it's one of those things. Anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al. And let's change up the pace, shall we? Next time on 12 Guns from Hell, we're going to be reviewing something a little bit better and I think we'll be doing something that I think a lot of us can agree with is actually going to be pretty awesome. Oh, hello. Next time on 12 Guns from Hell, we'll be reviewing the Dread Jacket Airsoft Kit. Oh, Conrad Al, maybe you should not talk about the Red Jacket. What? Oh, come on, the MP9 is not that bad. And I'm gonna give the 1911 a try. Obviously, it's on a separate review. Well, yeah, Red Jacket's on a kind of got some, some controversy. What do you mean, controversy? Come here, I tell you about the controversy. Come here, come here. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come over there. Hey, Dad, what?